Airborne Kingdom is a city builder with a twist that's just come to Nintendo Switch. While you will still have to worry about expanding your city and keeping up with the ever more demanding needs of your growing population, you'll also have to deal with the fact that your city is being built up in the air. And not just that, but it has to move around and explore to find more resources and meet kingdoms to ally with. So as well as the housing and faith and comfort buildings that you might find in other city builders, you also have to manage lift, having enough power to keep yourself in the sky, propulsion, having enough oomph to move around at a decent speed, and tilt, with every new building you construct adding its weight to another side of your empire. And if the tilt gets too much, the people will be unhappy. I mean, who likes walking uphill, right? Now the goal in Airborne Kingdom is to fulfil a vague prophecy to bring prosperity, by befriending the 12 kingdoms of the world, and for some reason getting to 150 population. I suppose it's a part of the prophecy, but to be honest, it feels like an arbitrary number to stop you completing the game too quickly. Anyway, the point is there's no conflict here. Everyone wants to be your friend. To complete this, you'll first have to find the kingdoms by exploring the map, physically moving your city to go and meet them, and then when you talk to them, they'll give you a quest. Something that will help them and prove your worth as an ally. Fortunately, they all seem to have one big problem at the moment, and you're the only one who can help. A little convenient. Now you'd think that this would be the meat of the game. After all, it is the main objective. But in reality, these quests are usually simple to complete. And if you've been doing the actual main part of the game, growing your empire and collecting resources, you can often complete these quests without even leaving the conversation that gave you the quest in the first place. Granted, a lot of the quests do involve some exploration, but they're relatively simple and really just serve to add a bit of direction to the experience. And despite the need to be constantly gathering the resources of the game, food, water, wood, clay, ore, quartz and cotton, they're pretty abundant in the world. Sure, a couple of areas are lacking in one or two of these resources, but you'll still be able to find enough to keep going. And they grow back after a very short time, so you can just leave for a bit, do something else, then come back and restock. There's never really too much pressure. So you'll spend most of your time on expanding and trying to keep your population happy, building out from the center and sending workers out to collect resources. Sort of like a much easier version of Frostpunk. And there's a good variety of buildings to research to keep things interesting and give a real sense of progression. Sure, you're starting buildings such as housing blocks to give people a place to sleep, storage to hold the resources you gather, and hangars to send out planes to the ground to gather what you need, will still remain vital as the game progresses. But you'll also acquire the ability to build things like farms to grow your own food, and green areas to make people happier. And you'll get the blueprints for these buildings by trading relics that you find in the world with different kingdoms you meet. Of course, you will have to plan carefully where you place these buildings, not just because of the tilt that we mentioned earlier, but also because people won't be very happy if their houses are placed, say, right next to a charcoal hut, for example. Something about fumes, I don't know. The tech tree as well is extensive and has a lot of new buildings to research and passive upgrades that can make a huge difference. And even though I completed the game, I got nowhere near researching everything on it. But despite the progression and some of the included intricacies of planning your empire, I'd still describe Airborne Kingdom as a relatively simple city builder. There isn't an awful lot of challenge and you won't have to worry about complex road systems and natural disasters like in some other games in the genre. Instead, what we have here is a relaxing and fun experience. And if you want to go a little bit more in depth and make your kingdom a little bit less of a clutter than mine is here, you can choose to dive in a bit more. And there's also some basic cosmetic changes you can make to the buildings to add a bit more personality to your kingdom. But of course, Airborne Kingdom has been out for almost a year at this stage on PC. What's it like to play on Switch? Well, overall I'd say I was pleasantly surprised. The controls, while clearly not as good as a mouse and keyboard would have been, were perfectly acceptable for playing the game, and the graphics may have had a few more jagged edges than I'd like, but it certainly didn't take too much away from the experience. It wasn't flawless though, and in the later game after around 100 people had joined my kingdom, I did find that the Switch suffered from a fair bit of slowdown with less than ideal frame rates and some responsiveness issues, meaning I occasionally had to press a button multiple times for my input to be accepted, and sometimes the camera went a little bit crazy. 
And I personally found that I didn't enjoy playing in handheld mode as much as I enjoyed playing docked. All the text was just a little bit small, and the interface slightly harder to navigate. I guess for me it's just too intricate of a game to work perfectly on handheld. It requires precise placement of certain objects, and there's lots and lots of text to read. So while I feel that the Switch version here is more than passable, and hell I even sat at my desk streaming the thing last week and it felt just fine to play that way, my advice would still be, if you can buy on PC and you don't care about playing Airborne Kingdom on the go, then the PC is the better choice. Overall, I really enjoyed Airborne Kingdom. It's still a city builder, but gives a very different experience from the usual city builders I play. It's far more relaxing while still always having something to do. Even if you're not building anything or gaining new citizens, you can use your city in the sky to explore the world and meet new allies. And the tech tree gives a constant sense of progression which feels very rewarding. And yeah, sometimes I feel like I want a bit more of a challenge, something more in depth where I feel like I could mess up and lose all of my progress if I'm not careful. But I've got plenty of games that offer me that, and having a more casual alternative for days when I'm not looking to exercise my grey matter too much can only be a good thing. Now there may only be around 10 hours of content in the main quest line, but it's a game I really struggle to put down during that time, and with a hard mode and new game plus, there's still content to be enjoyed after your first playthrough. So, for me, with its current price on Switch of $25 or £20, I definitely recommend picking this one up. Just be careful when you're playing it, because when you're having fun, time flies. Yeah, that genuinely was the best pun I could come up with.